Hey folks, just wanted to show you what the rehabilitation pin here at Earthshine looks like. So in case you are wanting to build your own, um, this one would be a good one to use as a guideline maybe. So take a look at it. Here we go. The pin itself is probably about 50 feet long and 25 feet wide or so. There are plenty of hiding places. The rehab pin has signage all the way around that informs guests of the lodge um, exactly what's going on in here. It talks about the life history of box turtles. Sorry about the shadow. It talks about the life history of box turtles. Conservation concerns. and the actual inhabitants of the rehab pen. There's Woody, Tripod, Rose, and Rowdy. And from up here on the boardwalk you get a good overview of the entire pen and if you see a turtle you're lucky because there's so much cover. They have so many hiding places that it's often rare to see one. Let's go take a look inside the pen. To get into the enclosure, you walk up to this sign and it talks about our uh, mark and recapture census and telemetry study of box turtles here at Earthshine. Sorry about the noise, that's our freezer. The sign lifts out of its little slot and you simply step over into the enclosure watching for turtles as you go of course here's the pond now you if you have box turtles you must have some type of water source because they do love to soak on hot summer days and of course if they get dehydrated this is the place they'll come and yes they do drink water they're not very good swimmers so you don't want to make it very deep and you can see I've filled the bottom of this pond with rocks small pea gravel here and then larger rocks in the deeper sections. There's a filter down under the rocks that filters the water and pumps it back up to a small waterfall area. I've got pitcher plants growing in the bog area of the pond which not only are extremely cool but eat pesky bugs that might bother our little friends and of course bother us. Yeah, look right down inside this pitcher and you can see some of the prey that this predatory plant has eaten. Ants. Mmm. Very cool. And then you can see the little hairs that keep the bugs from crawling back out. As well as the slippery lip where the inse insect lands and then falls in or in the ant's case, crawls up and then falls in. These are purple pitcher plants, which are native to the coastal areas of the United States and Canada. And of course, not just coastal areas in Canada, but lots of um, boggy areas as well and wetlands. That's why wetlands are so important. Very unusual creatures live there. Next to the purple pitcher plants, we have these mountain sweet pitcher plants, which are a federally endangered species. They're very small, as you can see, but they do play their part in eating, or I should say, digesting small insects. Very cool plants. Now, let's go back and look at the rest of the turtle pen. In this enclosure, I have several hide areas, such as this log old rotten log that I found in the forest and dragged in here. You flip it over and there's a real nice spot underneath for a turtle to hide, but nobody's home at the moment. There's lots of cover in the form of ornamental shrubby little plants and underneath these plants there's a nice thick mat of dead vegetation and mulch where turtles like to hide and hibernate during the winter time. In fact, one of our turtles hibernated in this very spot 
uh, last winter. They spent the entire winter in this one little spot here under these few little dry leaves. Pretty amazing. It's where Rose spent the winter. Here's some more hides. Some old rotted, half, half rotten logs or log rounds. You can see from the turtle's eye view, this would make a really good spot to, to hide out. Oh, look inside this hide. It looks like someone is present. Well, who is it? Let's raise the log and see. Aha! It's Rowdy. Hello, Rowdy. Oh, he says I don't want to be bothered. There he is. There's Rowdy. You know, let's leave him alone. Okay. Right behind Rowdy's log. Big, thick mass of hostas. Of course, hostas have really good hiding spots underneath. See there? Especially up against this rock wall. Because rock walls provide a home for lots of small creatures like bugs, worms, grubs, things like that that the box turtle would love to snack on. And behind the hostas, there's a huge pokeberry plant. And pokeberry plants provide pokeberries. Here's some that aren't quite ripe yet. Here's some that are. And box turtles will eat pokeberries, I've read. I've never seen them eat them. But apparently, they can act as a natural wormer. Which, of course, box turtles can get worms, so that will help them. Oh, look at this. That will help them purge their digestive system of worms in the fall, right before they go into hibernation. Which will help them throughout hibernation. Because if you had a load of worms while hibernating, it could be bad. There's another hide. Let's see who might be hiding in here. Aha! It's Tripod. Hello, Tripod. Tripod was the first turtle to come to our facility. Tripod lost her left rear leg to a vehicle accident. A car, a car ran over her, crushing her, her left rear leg and damaging her left front leg. I took her to the vet. The vet amputated her leg, put her on antibiotics, and she's done well ever since. She's been here for over a year and a half. And you can see she likes these hides. They really need this feeling of security to be a healthy turtle. Let's leave her alone. Not only do these old stumps provide good hiding places, but they also provide really good habitat for insects. Things the turtles like to eat. Insects and slugs. Looking under here, there's no telling what you'd find. I don't see anything right now, but that's probably because it's so cool, but well, there's a cricket. And turtles love crickets. Several crickets. So, and here are some feathers. Feathers from a little bird that flew into the window and I tossed in here and the turtles devoured because they love to eat carrion or dead things, as long as it's fresh. I wouldn't give my turtles anything that's rotten. Let's 